holder, whether it's gold or silver, it's the same thing. Um, are, are you are you forced to hedge those positions, um, Dave, along with everyone else? And and you know, obviously, this gaming, it comes a point where you you may have to hedge stuff and and become part of this uh, paper game. I mean, it's. I guess I'm probably guilty of being a permable for the sector, and. And that's just because I, you know, the, the, to me, there's just an enormous arbitrage opportunity between what I think the intrinsic value for gold and silver is, which is much higher versus, you know, where, where it trades. And is obviously the price setting mechanism is the derivatives market and the unallocated uh, gold system on the LBMA. Um, I mean, from time to time, we've tried putting on hedges and it's, it's, it's tough. It's it's really so it's really just a, a a function of if I if I get bearish on the market or I think we're going to go through a, a correction or a you know correction cycle or a pullback I'll try to raise cash by selling the mining stocks but in terms of the physical gold and silver that we hold in a non comex vault um, we don't touch that and we don't we don't try to hedge it and I mean my biggest fear is if <clears throat> let's just say you know, we, we tried to sell some of that or we wanted to sell some of that gold and silver. I'd be worried about maybe being able to replace it down the road at some point. Very, very good answer. I mean, Dave, that makes total sense. That That is exactly how I think I see things as well. I mean, you know, that we're not in the paper. <laughs> when you when you talk about physical here, you're talking about physical gold. I don't know of a single client in all the years that has ever sold I and mean, we're talking about wholesale side of things we're talking about clients with a lot of bullion uh gold and silver bullion and yeah okay maybe some coin guys do and i don't get involved with the coin coins so maybe you do see some of the coin guys flip in and out but i don't see a single ounce ever come up for sale so it much like you i think i i view it as an opportunity um because we, we at least we're gifted with the the view of the wholesale market, the real footprints, as opposed to this absolute hocus pocus of, of paper supply, which obviously we have to keep an eye on. But but we look at it, I think we look at it in the same way. Hey, maybe this is the, the best opportunity. And and where the hell, if I did sell it, would I replace it is, is a very good point. At what point will we see a revaluation? There's so many things to consider. One of the things that I thought if I found interesting was Andy Sheckman of Miles Franklin, um, and they've they've been around for a long time. You guys know him, and uh, he was talking about you know we we're talking about you know signs that we'll see when we think the market's getting when they're finally going to be able to break the the derivatives market, and um, you know one of the signs is is you're going to see premiums on on the coins and even the bars widen out quite a bit you know before before there's some type of default on on one of the major exchanges and he said that you know silver you know the premiums are, are really wide right now well imagine if you're trying to you know game the market and you expected a sell-off in in the price of silver and so you sell your silver in the high 20s and now it's it's in the you know 23 24 range and you say oh maybe i better replace it and you know, all of a sudden, you're paying what you what you received when you sold it because the premiums have widened out, and that's that's a sign of scarcity, at least at the retail sector. Um, and he said, you know, you're, we're not seeing premiums like that in, in gold yet. And he said the dealers have plenty of gold, and so I said to him, I said, well, I don't, you know, silver is what it is. I'll be, I want, I want to be the first phone call when a big hedge fund calls you up and says, sell me all the gold that you have. Or as much gold as you can, and he said, "Well, I actually just got that phone call a few days ago, and it was a, it was a big uh, investment management fund. I don't know if it was a hedge fund per se, and they gave him a, a you know they said they're looking to buy, and I don't want to you know put the exact figure out there, but it had eight zeros after it worth of of uh, gold gold bullion coins. They didn't want bars for some reason. I'm not sure why." And when I thought about it afterwards, my guess is if it is a hedge fund, they're probably looking and saying, you're probably going to game the premium to some extent, you know, because I mean, I said when I, you know, kind of got up, up the curve and sort of at least 
thought I figured out what part of what was going on, I, you know, and this was 15, 17 years ago, I said, at some point, we're going to see 100% premiums on gold, you know, at least at the, on the retail side on, on gold, because there's just going to be such a scarcity and there's going to be so much money that has been printed looking to, to buy physical gold and silver. You know, it, it, it makes total sense. And, and so, it, as you say, it's, it's, it's this whole, there's this disconnect. It's, we're talking about this disconnect between the paper and the physical price and, and then the resulting, and you're talking about, that there's going to be indicators like premium expansions, etc. cetera. Um, but it was really interesting. Um, yesterday, and, and this is something I... I is so fresh in my mind because it, it it's it's not out there yet um so obviously you know we're very involved in the wholesale market and and um yesterday and this is so this is a bank you know um yesterday just and this is the interesting part just a silver pit opens and what does silver do bang down it goes um today again pit open bang down it goes just as it was going down yesterday uh, we were chasing some silver and we got a phone call back to say, sorry, by the way, Standard Chartered, one of the market makers on the on the uh, on the on the COMEX has just come in and taken every single ounce future, not just now, but they've bought every single ounce out of this is one big supply. And I won't name him right now, but it's a very big producer. And they've said, They've bought everything, including forward production into 2022. Now, come on. This is while we see this tanking price, we see Standard Chartered, a COMEX market maker out there buying spot gold, locking in the price in the spot gold market to buy everything in the future. Now, spoke to Argo and they said, and this is starting to feedback. So I spoke to Argo yesterday and they said, we're going to have no silver. We're going to have no silver next year. It's like, this is crazy. And this is crazy. And so when we look at this market and you see this price, and but to me, I think I know what the game is. And, and, and I think we know what the game is, is that when we look at these short cells coming through in, in on, on the COMEX, boom, 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 bang, 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 bang. And, it, and, it, and obviously it forces out moving averages. You, you can trip out, you know where the long stops are, you know all the game. Um, you, you also know um, uh, then what you're going to do is also incentivize hedging, uh, legitimate hedging, people going short to hedge positions, um, big funds out there having to do that. Um, and, and then suddenly, but when we look at it, we go, hold on a minute, because the over-the-counter market is so opaque and because it's still, I mean, silver, we reckon 500 to 1. Gold has been 100 to 1. Even Reverse Bank of India says gold 100 to 1, 92 to 1, they said. Yeah, um, I remember that. But 500 to 1 silver. So what we're seeing is, to me, is we're seeing unrealized, these guys are out in the holes, in the in the spot market. Now, I, I can go out in the spot market right now, as you can, and on the over-the-counter market in, in the UK or, or, or anywhere in, in Europe, and I can buy a lot of spot silver. It's a paper position. Nobody realizes whether that's going to be crystallized into physical or not. So these guys are out there buying all this physical, locking in the price. It's just a number. Until it actually is crystallized, it's, it's not transacted. So it just sits there. In the meantime, they're hedging that position on the COMEX and you see all the shorts appearing. And so the COMEX centric guys in the casino see all these shorts coming in, but don't see the long side of that transaction. And this to me is exactly what's going on. And this tells me what a screaming opportunity this is right now. When we've got production being completely eaten up into 2022 for silver, I mean, how can you have a price? The price to 